The main cause for ovarian cancer is multifactorial. We think that all cancer is genetic or genetic alterations that occur within that patient's um, body. And um, for ovarian cancer, we used to think that exposure to talc, uh, we used to think that incessant uh, ovulation or people who have um, uh, more periods, they start ovulating earlier, so they start menstruating earlier in life and then will uh, uh, go through the change of life uh, uh, older, and so they have more incessant ovulation, uh, not having any children. Um, can be a risk factor for ovarian cancer. And, you know, there are some dietary concerns. A uh, high-fatty diet uh, may be a concern as well. Symptoms uh, for ovarian cancer that, that women should be aware of is um, abdominal bloating, um, any irregular vaginal bleeding, um, postcoital bleeding should be looked at, um, your early satiety or you just aren't eating as big as meals, you notice that um, your, your jeans or your pants are tighter or, or, or that your tummy's swollen, um, nausea, vomiting, or rectal bleeding. I think those are all types of symptoms that, that patients need to be aware of. I kind of think of three types of ovarian cancer. In younger women, and I usually think, you know, 12, 13, 14, and into their teens, they can develop this germ cell tumor, which with surgery and chemotherapy um, have a high rate of curability. A very common medication, such as birth control pills, um, are a preventive uh, strategy. And young women who take birth control pills actually will help prevent the development of ovarian cancer. Then there's what's called the gonadostromal tumors, which generally occur in um, women in, in, in midlife, so between age 35, 45, 50. And those, those are cancers that, again, generally are not very lethal with surgery, and sometimes chemotherapy can be cured. And then the most common kind of ovarian cancer that we all are very concerned about is the epithelial ovarian type of cancer. The epithelial ovarian cancer generally will occur in women in their mid 50s to early 60s or even older. I look at screening for cancers and catching cancers early and I think the classic example in gynecology is the pap smear. That pap smear can de detect precancerous or early cancerous changes. I think when patients get on the internet they may see that ovarian cancer is a very lethal disease and it is but I still have stories of patients who have had stage one cancer and actually have gone on to have children and have done fine and been cancer free. And again, that was because they saw their, their OB-GYN physician, he did detected the cancer, called me in, and we did the appropriate surgery, did the appropriate chemotherapy, and we could spare that ovary, and she ended up having children. So there are definitely a lot of positives and a lot of uh, upside to what we're doing with ovarian cancer, but you really need to make sure that you're treated with somebody who's familiar with the clinical trials, who's familiar with the most recent current literature to make sure that you're getting the most cutting edge care. I think that's the most important thing.